Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be looking at the Evans Gambit, specifically the decline line. So the Evans Gambit, pawn e4, pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then getting the bishops involved into the game, and then playing pawn here to b4. You're looking to give up material, so after the bishop takes, which is the most common in the Evans Gambit, to then play pawn to c3, and after the bishop moves, to then play pawn to d4, trying to control the center of the board. So that's the Evans Gambit, there's another video on that, but I thought it'd be good to go in depth into the decline lines because again, a lot of times your opponents don't go for the decline that you want and it's very important to understand how to react if they don't go for the Gambit. First thing that you could see is Bishop to D4. Or if we look at this, we can pretty much already tell that if they're not going to take the pawn, the bishop's going to have to move or the bishop's going to fall. So bishop to d4 is an option. This is going to be pretty easy for white. Pawn here to c3. White's in a much better position. He still has the pawn here on b4, and he's continuing his same plan as before. Pawn here to c3, pushing forward with pawn here to d4, getting ready to castle on the king side, controlling the center of the board. This is going to be a pretty easy game for white. Not very common. Another more common move that you will see is bishop back here to d6. Now this is still pretty good for white. Again he still has this pawn here on b4. This bishop is really blocking off a lot of the development from the queen side from black. This pawn on here on d7 can't really move. It's kind of awkward which makes this light square bishop it's not going to be doing anything for a long time. Black is pretty much forced to castle on the king side and kind of develop. He's going to be playing knight to f6 pretty soon. White can just continue with the same game plan if he wants to. Pawn here to c3. He can castle on the king side. He can continue pretty easy from here. Now there's a few ways that white can actually continue in this particular case. He could play pawn here to b5. Could be followed by knight here to a5. And then you can kind of bring this back here if you want it here. You could play bishop to e2. That's one way to go about it. A move that I like a little bit better is after the bishop comes here to d6 is pawn here to a3 and then after knight here to f6 then we have pawn here to d3 now it's a little bit different but if you kinda look at this this is extremely easy for white to play he has nice pawn chains even over here with his pawn here on a3 and b4 this is really nice he can castle on the king side he can play knight here to c3, get involved into the game. He has a nice long way for his bishop to control if he ever needs to kick it back. His bishop can come here to b2 and kind of reign supreme over this long diagonal, or he can easily get developed over here. This is probably the easiest way for white to continue because he has so many options, and it's really hard for black to really stop a lot of this because there's so many different avenues. So again, if you see this, you can take the aggressive approach and kind of push forward with pawn to b5 but it's much easier if you just stick with pawn to a3 and then kind of change things up a little bit you don't really have to put more pressure on the center or just play pawn here to d3 and then you can develop from there another common move that you'll see is the bishop coming back here to e7 they're probably not going to come back here to f8 that would just be terrible losing so much time and space but bishop here to e7 is fine because they can still bring knight here to f6 pretty safe defense and then castle on the king side. From here White's going to play similar as he did before. He's going to play pawn here to a3 again protecting his pawn here on b4 also allowing him to play bishop here to b2, knight here to c3 really leaves the door open for a lot of what he wants to do. If we see knight here to f6 same thing as before we're going to change it up a little bit and play pawn here to d3 opening up those avenues. From here we could see black pushing forward more than times than not you'll see the king castling on the king side but you could see the pawn coming here to, to d5 after the exchange you have the knights then the bishop can just come to let's say b2 all of a sudden white has a pretty good attack he has both of his bishops just eyeing down these long diagonals he can castle on the king side pretty easy get his rook over here on e1 controlling the semi open file starting to put a lot of pressure on the blacks king side which right now it looks like he's going to castle but he may change his mind knowing that he has so much pressure from white. The most common variation that you'll see, the one that we're going to be talking about the most because you'll see it more often than not, is the bishop coming back here to b6. It still puts a lot of pressure on this long diagonal attacking the square here on f2 which is weakness for white early on into the game. The king is the only piece that protects it. So 
a lot of times black will put it here on b6 trying to maintain this pressure over here and it's important that white understands how to attack this because if he doesn't attack it correctly it can go very very bad for white white needs to play pawn here to a4 and if you kind of look at it, it it's pretty interesting white is looking to attack on the queen side his next move if he could would just be pawn here to a5 pretty much threatening to take this bishop without much concession Black has to kind of respond. There's a few ways that he can respond, so it's good from here to kind of talk about how Black can respond. One way is he could now take this pawn here on b4 with his knight. We already talked about if he doesn't take the pawn right away in the Evans game, but it is very possible to go ahead and take with his knight right here. White's not going to push forward with pawn here to a5. Where's the bishop go? Doesn't have too many options. We could see the bishop come here to d4. And then we see pawn here to c3. So that's going to be bad. Probably not going to see that too often because that's going to give up one of these minor pieces. Another thing that you could see more common is bishop here to c5. Makes more sense, but we're going to be doing the same thing. The pawn's going to come here to c3. After the knight moves, we could see the knight coming to a6. This seems pretty logical. Then the king can castle on the king side. So if we look at it, white's given up some material but he has a much better game in this particular case. Let's say we look at it from here. This knight can't move, so let's say the knight comes to f6. If we kind of go through this, now white can push forward with d4, starting to put even more pressure on the center of the board. He can easily get all of his pieces involved into the action. His queen can swing wherever he wants to. He's already castled. His white bishop is destroying this long diagonal. He can easily get his knight involved, his dark square bishop, so it has a lot of different options from here. So if we look at it, we see, okay, let's have this pawn take here on d4, and then the pawn takes. Where does black go from here? A few options he could play, bishop here to b4. The queen can now come here to b3. This starts to get very complicated for black. Eyeing down this square here on f7, he does have two attackers. The next move, if he wanted, he can play knight here to g5, have three attackers on f7. So it's going to be very difficult for black to kind of respond to all these. If instead of coming to b4, he could play bishop here to d6. Again, it kind of stops some of what we talked about as far as the pawn coming forward. But this is going to be bad, as you can imagine, with pawn here to e5. That's definitely going to be a mistake. could also bring his bishop back here to e7. We've already talked about bringing it back here to f8. It's kind of a mistake. But after e7, pushing forward with e5. Now, how does black respond to this? He could play knight here to e4. Again, this queen here to b3 is going to be very difficult to deal with. He could bring it over here, knight to h5. But again, knight to g5 starts to get very, very tricky as far as how black responds. This is kind of opening up an attack here on the knight on h5. So even if the bishop takes, now the queen takes here on h5. Again, this is threatening not only this bishop here on g5, but it's also threatening mate in one with queen taking here on f7. So that's going to be very difficult. Even if the knight comes to a pretty aggressive square of knight to g4, pretty simple. I can just play pawn here to h3, forcing the knight to move. The knight can't come back here to f6, we already talked about. If it does come back here to h6, the bishop can take after we have this exchange right here. Then we have the knight to c3. If we kind of look at this board right here, white's given up some material, but he's just dominating this game. This is an overwhelming victory for white. He has all of his pieces developed. His queen can get involved. This knight over here is not doing much of anything. The king side, where black really wants to castle, is just completely decimated. And white has free reign to kind of do what he wants to. It's going to be very difficult for white or for black to get many of his pieces developed. This queen can't move for a few moves. This light square bishop can't go anywhere. This knight can't really go anywhere productive. And this rook over here on a8 is not going to be moving for a long time. So this particular situation is very, very good for white. Now if we step back a few moves, we look at this. We talked about what happens if the knight comes to a6. But the knight doesn't have to come to a6. He could come to c6 in this variation. And this is actually my favorite variation because white can get pretty aggressive. Typically you want to play pawn to c3 and then push forward with the pawn to d4. But after the pawn takes here, white doesn't have to recapture. Instead, he can go ahead and castle on the king side. Again, when you play a gambit, you try to be pretty aggressive. You don't mind giving up some material because you know you're going to have a strong attack. So after this pawn takes, if we look at this board, 
White's given up a decent amount of material. He's down two pawns in material, but he's dominating this board. He's already castled. Black's a few moves away from castling. It's going to be very difficult to castle on the queen side. He's going to be way too far behind to do that. If he tries to castle on the king side, knight here to f6, we could play pawn here to e5, forcing this knight to move. Let's say the knight comes over here to g4. Then white has queen here to d5, which is an interesting move because typically you don't have the queen just reign supreme, but because of this openness, white can really dominate with his bishops, he can dominate with his queen. This is threatening mate right here on f7. If black decides to castle now for safety, black's going to lose material, and now all of a sudden white's dominant not only in material, but in the center of the board. Now it doesn't have to castle, you could see the queen coming here to e7, but now the bishop can just swing in here to g5. It's being protected by the knight, so the queen can't really do too much. If the pawn comes down here to f6, trying to block this off, we just have the pawn take right here on f6. Also, this is not only threatening, but if this queen moves, white can potentially take over here on c5. He can also swing his rook over here to e1 threatening both the queen and the king. So this is, again, putting more and more pressure on black. This is going to be very, very good for white. Now, if we come back to the beginning, after pawn to a4, another variation that you may see is pawn to a6, still allowing for the bishop to come back here to a7, so he can still control this long diagonal. This is going to be completely fine. There's actually an attack that you can play in this that I really like. It's called the conquest attack and it's knight here to c3. After the knight comes to f6, which is the most common move for black because he wants to go ahead and castle so he can get some safety. Anytime you're playing against the gambit, you want to get king safety because you just don't know what your opponent's necessarily going to do. White can push forward with pawn to d4, pretty common, trying to control the center of the board. But the only difference is after the pawn takes here on d4, white's now going to swoop in with knight here to d5. And again, this is the quan conquest attack. It's only for players that want to be super aggressive. So let me just throw that out there. It can get pretty crazy. If you want to play more of a slow, subtle game, this is definitely not going to be the attack for you, but you're typically not going to be playing the Evans Gambit in the first place. So from here, we could see the knight taking on e4 first. This is one option. We can now see castle. We can see castle. Then the rook could swing over here to e1, starting to put pressure. This is going to be completely fine. More common than that is for the knight just to go ahead and take here on d5. After this, we're just going to see the pawn take. Very important that you capture with the right material. So the pawn taking instead of the bishop, this is important. A few things from here. The knight could take on b4, just trying to go over all the different options from here. We could have castle on both sides of the board. Then we could have bishop coming over here to g5. Very active position from white right here. Another thing that you could see after the pawn comes here is the queen coming here to e7 threatening the king right here, forcing him to move, and white's actually okay with moving his king here to f1. Now, it looks kind of funny because, yes, white would like to castle on the king side, but he's not too worried. He can still get some counterplay in this particular game. After this, the knight could come over here to e5. Again, it is being attacked by this pawn, so he does want to move somewhere. It could be a little weaker if he decides to take here on b4 so you could just see this knight coming over here to e5 putting more pressure but now there's an interesting move that white has and he can play pawn here to d6 now if the queen takes this is probably going to be worse for black now we can have the bishop coming over here to f4 pinning down this material here the knight can't move and take because it's going to fall but there's now two attackers on the square right here. Now we could see the pawn coming to f6, trying to add a defender on the square right here. But then after the exchange, this is going to be completely fine for white because he can swoop in with queen to h5. All of a sudden there's too much pressure and he also has another attacker right here on the square on e5. If instead of taking with the queen, he now decides to take with his pawn here on d6, now white can play bishop here to d5, and it gets pretty interesting right here. White is down material, but black has a lot of things that he has to be cautious about. He has triple pawns on the d-file, so that's not that great, although he is able to take back this pawn on d4 if white wants to. He does have two attackers right here, 
But this bishop on d5 is kind of a pain. It's going to be very difficult for black to deal with. His light square bishop on c8 isn't going anywhere. And because it's not going anywhere, again, this bishop even blocks this pawn from moving, blocking this pawn from moving. Because this bishop's not moving, this rook over here is not rooking is not moving as well. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know it's not always about the pieces you have, it's about the pieces you have in the fight. White can really use a lot of his pieces where black just can't do a whole lot. So if we look at this particular case after the bishop to d5, we could have castling over here, we could have the bishop coming over here to g5, pretty aggressive. The only really move from here is to play queen to e8. Something else instead of castling on the, the king side, a lot of times you'll see the queen try to move, so queen here to f6. From now we can play knight here to g5, pretty aggressive. We can now have castling on the king's side. But now white's going to try something different. Because he has played this pawn here to a4, he can now play rook over here to a3, and they can start to swing his rook and really get it involved into the action. Now this is somewhat tough for black to deal with. He could try pawn here to h6, kind of forcing this knight away right here but that's going to be completely fine we can just play knight here to e4 threatening the queen right here where the queen moves from here is actually very important the queen pretty much has to play f5 if he doesn't move f5 he's kind of in a lot of trouble if he moves queen over here to d8 then rook to g3 is going to be very tough to deal with again white has a lot of threats he can get his queen involved he can play bishop taking on h6 and can't recapture because this rook right here he's also threatening with his bishop he can at any time get his knight involved into the game so it's going to be tough to deal with if the queen just comes back here to e7 same kind of thing it's still going to be tough the rook can swing over here to h3 if he wants to again threatening this material over here if the queen comes to let's say h4 we're going to see the same thing coming back here to h3 no great squares. Probably the best square for the queen is to come to f5. From now, the rook is going to swing over here to d3, threatening the material as well. Again, putting a lot of pressure on the square on g7. Black could try to stop it with knight here to g7, or g6, excuse me. This is one option. From here, it's going to get kind of interesting. We're now going to play queen here to f3, and it's just kind of bonkers from here. So, Again, a very aggressive line from white. Black over here is still trying to figure out how he's going to get his material involved into the game. This bishop here on d5 not only controls the center of the board, but it pretty much stops two of black's pieces from pretty much doing anything in this particular game. It's very important, again, in this particular conquest attack that you understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to attack the king side. And at the same time, you're trying to thwart any development that black has on the queen side. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. A lot of different variations, a lot of stuff to talk about in the Evans Gambit. Hopefully these are all the variations that you'll see in the decline line. I myself obviously like the accepted line. Uh, but hopefully if you do play the Evans Gambit, this will definitely give you some insight into how to play correctly if they don't accept the line. So. Enjoy the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.